From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Mr. Oldfield calling, sir. You left word at my office, Mr. Dollar? That's right, Mr. Oldfield. I think I'm going to need an attorney. Divorce? Civil suit? What, Mr. Dollar? Withholding evidence. Murder. Let's take the murder first. Who did it? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure I have the murder weapon in my possession right now. Who was killed? A man named Belden, I think. What do you want me to do, sir? Take my statement, notarize it, give me some legal advice. Where are you? Police station in the pay booth down the hall from Homicide. I'll meet you there in five minutes. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, Vicksburg, Virginia. To Special Investigator Johnny Dollar for personal reasons. Attention, Chief Accountant, Eastern Seaboard Casualty Insurance Corporation, Providence, Rhode Island. Dear Jim, I'm attaching my own expense sheet to your bill for clarification purposes. Expense account item 10, 10 cents. One cup of coffee at the counter in the lobby of the Vicksburg Police Station while I waited for Samuel W. Oldfield, attorney at law, to appear. He was there in exactly five minutes. Mr. Dollar? That's right. Sam Oldfield, sir. You're the only one here in the lobby, so I figured you were the right man. Yeah. Cup of coffee, Mr. Oldfield? No thanks. Gives me heartburn. But now sit down, will you? That was a pretty interesting phone call. Tell me, who are you, sir? Johnny Dollar. I'm a private insurance investigator. Mm -hmm. How'd you get my name? I looked it up in the yellow pages of the telephone directory. You don't live here in Vicksburg? No, I'm from Hartford, Connecticut. All right, sir. Now, tell me about the murder and the withholding of information. (sighs) Maybe I better start from the top. Go right ahead, any way you like. Well, two days ago, I flew down here to investigate a small burglary at the Plantagen Hotel. It was already solved by the time my plane got in. Police? Yeah. I had nothing better to do, so I waited around the hotel bar for my return reservation back to Hartford. Then I happened to walk outside to the parking lot for a breath of fresh air. I saw a woman and a man standing there arguing. When I got close to them, the woman asked me to help her. I did. How do you mean? Well, the the man she was with started to act like a kid. He got rough. So I shoved him away. Go on. Well, the woman was upset. So I took her inside the hotel and bought her a drink. After that, I put her in a cab and started to send her on her way. She started to act sick about that. Wait, is this the woman whose picture was in the paper tonight? The one who died of poisoning and the police don't know who she is? Yeah. I don't know who she is, Mr. Oldfield. Except that her name's Amy Duran. I found out her name because I found her purse and there was a gun in it. A thirty-eight Colt registered to a man named O'Connell. I checked on the gun here at headquarters, went out to the address and found out O'Connell was a bank guard and had died about a year ago. I talked to his wife, Teresa O'Connell. While I was there, the man I'd seen the night before showed up. His name's Paul Dameron. Now, I didn't tell him or Mrs. O'Connell about the gun. I came down here to give it to the police and tell them. But when I got here, Lieutenant Akins was pretty busy trying to solve the murder of a man named Belden, who'd been shot with a thirty-eight three times. There are three slugs missing from the gun I found. You got a light, sir? Yeah. Here you go. When you uh, found Amy Duran's purse, why didn't you turn it over to the police? Oh, I thought I... Well, somehow I thought maybe I could help the girl. I mean, her last words before she died were, help me. And for some reason or other, I I thought maybe I could. Do you have any cards or letters, anything like that? Something that says you're what you say you are, sir? Yeah, sure. Let's see. Okay, Dollar. Now, as I see it, you probably hooked up with someone who did some shooting. And that's what worries you. I want you to take my statement and notarize it before I turn the gun in. That'll protect you some. If they want to get nasty, they can, though. You know that. Yeah, I know. Well, as I see it, the main job here is to try to keep you out of trouble. And a statement explaining your motive for participation in the whole affair might help. That's why I called you. All right, then. Now... Dollar. Yeah? You didn't shoot anybody, did you? No. Okay, then, sir. Let's go over to my office. (laughs) 
We did, and I made the necessary statement, and Mr. Oldfield notarized it. After that, I went back to the Vicksburg police station to talk to Lieutenant Akins. The 38 I'd found in Amy Duran's purse was still in my pocket, and her words were still in my mind. Help me. Please help me. Thought you was going back to Hartford, Dollar. Oh, I uh, decided to hang around and see what came up. Mm-hmm. Nothing so far on the girl. No one's recognized a picture in the paper. Had to turn that over to missing persons. This murder case going to eat up all my time. What happened, Lieutenant? Oh, maid at the apartment house where this man Belden was staying found him late this afternoon. He'd been dead about 24 hours, shot with a 38. You sure? I'm sure. We did a post-mortem right away. It's a pretty sad case. You, uh, you know who shot him? <laughs> Have a pretty good idea. See, this Belden, he was an auditor working on some books at a firm of textile wholesalers here. Richmond Limited. The papers scattered around his apartment show he'd found a $10,000 shortage going over their books. And the chief accountant for this Richmond company is missing. Yeah, well, that does make it seem pretty clean. Yeah, but... all we have to do is find that accountant. Had an APB out for half an hour now. I think we'll pick her up pretty soon. Her? Who? Well, her, Dollar. The chief accountant for Richmond Limited. She's a woman. Name of uh, Amy Duran. To all appearances, Amy Duran had been guilty of embezzling money and murdering the auditor Belden who had discovered the shortages in her books. I didn't tell Akins that his suspect was the girl lying in the morgue at the moment unidentified. I knew that it was only a matter of minutes before her sister or Paul Dameron would be down to identify her. And for the third time, I didn't tell Lieutenant Akins about the gun. I knew if I turned that over to him, it would be a closed case all around. And somehow I didn't want it closed on Amy Duran. Not that way. For that reason, I went back to my hotel room for a couple of hours and... Then about 9 o'clock that night, I found myself over on Polk Street at Teresa O'Connell's house once more. Oh. Hello, Mrs. O'Connell. Oh, uh, Mr. Dollar, isn't it? Yes. Oh, Mr. Dollar, I, I had the most awful news tonight. My sister Amy... She's dead. You'll have to excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. May I come in? I'd like to talk to you about your sister, Mrs. O'Connell. Well, I... I... Paul came in with tonight's paper and showed me Amy's picture. He went down in the morgue to identify her. I couldn't bear to. Sure. I feel somehow, in some way, that... Your friend, Mr. Dollar. Mrs. O'Connell, I am a friend in a way. But mostly I'm an insurance investigator. What? You thought I was a friend of your dead husband when I came here earlier. I'm not. I never even knew him. But, Mr. Dollar, I don't understand. I met your sister Amy last night. I was the last one to speak to her before she died. I took her to the emergency hospital last night. Well, wait, wait. This is all very confusing. You say you're insurance investigator? Yes. Now, when... Well, I got your address from a gun I found in your sister's purse... I traced it through the license to carry. This gun, Mrs. O'Connell. Your husband was licensed to carry it when he worked for a banking firm. Do you recognize it? Oh, yes, I suppose I do. I think it's one of Ray's guns. Now, please, but... please, let me find something out first. Believe me, I do want to help. Did you know your sister had this gun? Oh, no. I... What would Amy want with a gun? I mean, well, she could have picked it up here any time she came over and probably did. But why would Amy have a gun in her purse? Sit down, please. Now, Mrs. O'Connell, you better listen to me carefully. Sometime late yesterday afternoon or early evening, a man named Belden was shot and killed. Clarence Belden? Yes. Why, he worked with an auditing firm. Amy spoke of him. <sighs> Mr. Dollar. Wait now, wait. Listen to the rest of this. Belden had been working on books for Richmond Limited. As I understand it, your sister Amy was responsible for those books. Right now, the police have enough evidence to figure that your sister stole $10,000 from Richmond Limited. Amy? Well, no, now, no, Now, hear me out, Mrs. Not... O'Connell. They have that evidence in bulk form. They certainly have reason to assume, and they are assuming, that your sister shot Belden to keep him quiet about the shortage. How 
can you say those things about Amy when she's not here to defend herself? Please, please, I'm just telling you what's going on downtown, what they've found. This gun they don't have yet. I've withheld it. It has been fired three times recently. Belden was shot three times. By now, your sister's body has no doubt been identified. They've already established that she died of poisoning... And they halfway have the idea that she committed suicide. No. Oh, don't you see? They'll say she shot Belden to cover up and keep it quiet. And then saw how useless it was. Took poison and killed herself to escape punishment. You're horrible. Horrible. Go away. Go away from me. I'm sorry, but in the face of all this, I want to help her if I can. If it isn't too late. I want to help you. But, Mrs. O'Connell, you'll have to help me. Now, why? Why would your sister steal? Why? I don't know. I think you do know. Tell me, please, for her sake, Mrs. O'Connell. Why? What have you got to do with her? I met her only for a few minutes, but in that few minutes, I got the idea that she was a pretty nice person. She didn't strike me as a thief. She didn't look like a killer. And most of all, she didn't look like a woman who'd take the suicide way out of things. Now, that's all I have, except that she asked me to help her. And I'm trying to do that now. Believe me, I want to help her if I can. I've always been an awful child, Mr. Dollar. When Ray died, I tried to kill myself. Amy saved me. I remember then, at the hospital. She was beside my bed, and she said to me, I'll make you want to live again. I'll make you. Amy was always like that, kind and decent. You weren't wrong about her. She was decent, thoughtful, good. She, she did everything for me. She gave me these clothes and a car, introduced me to nice people from her office like Paul, Paul Dameron. Yes. That must be where all the money went to. Not on herself, but on me, for me. I'm the only reason I can think of that she'd take money from the firm. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know she was stealing from me. I didn't know. I wouldn't have let her do it. She didn't have to pamper me that much. I'm not that much of a child. She didn't have to do it. She didn't have to do it. Wait. Wait a minute. She didn't kill herself. She didn't steal. She didn't murder that man. I did all those things because it was all for me. Now, here's our star to tell you about the final intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, all the evidence comes true. A helpless dead girl gets her help. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Deller, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Deller. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>